What's going on guys? It's the Crypto Lark here. Today we're going to talk about Bitcoin and all of the drama that is happening with Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies over in Russia. And of course we're going to talk a little bit in the context as well about central banks and the threat that they face in the face of the cryptocurrency revolution. Now before we get into all of that, quick shout out as always to everyone who has been hitting that like button and of course everyone who has been subscribing to the channel you can subscribe right down below there and of course that is to the old subscribers who have been with us for a long long time your support is so appreciated and of course big welcome to all of the new subscribers to the channel also now quick disclaimer as well not professional financial advice dudes just a guy talking about cryptocurrencies let's get into it Bitcoin, $4,777.51, down a little bit on the day. Still not back to 5000 Keep watching out for it. But again, this kind of news that we're going to be talking about comes out of Russia, and Bitcoin just goes, whatever. Keeps on going. Keeps on going. Of course, the demand for Bitcoin in Korea and Japan is enough to support probably the entire market. However, of course these different countries coming out with these nonsensical BS bans. Not useful, but it happens. Now, what is the news? Russia's central bank backs move to block Bitcoin websites. The dumbest thing I've heard in a long time. So look, that'll obviously see a lot of Russian exchanges be shut down. That really sucks. Uh, but it'll also they'll be trying to restrict access for anyone who's basically not tech friendly to be able to access these websites in Russia. That's really, really unfortunate. A big step backwards for the whole space in general, but particularly for Russia, because Russia's trying. There's this whole faction in Russia of people who are super excited about cryptocurrencies, who are super into it, who are, you know, there's a lot of companies coming out of Russia that are blockchain. Uh, you know, cryptocurrency companies, and then the government goes and does something stupid like this. So, Mr. Shevstov said that Bitcoin is an asset that can generate high returns very quickly. It shows signs of being a pyramid scheme. You so show signs of not knowing what the heck you're talking about. That's what. Except, of course, yes, it can generate high returns very quickly, which is probably why they don't want regular humans buying it. Now, I don't know the implications for the uh, Moscow Stock Exchange, but they might still be allowed to trade it. Of course, this is a very new thing out of the government. More details will come out later. This is this the this whole video is not designed to spread, uh, you know, fear or doubt or any of that stuff. It's really just about staying informed about what's going on around the world in the crypto space. So, it's pretty unfortunate. So the deputy governor of the Bank of Russia told Bloomberg, China doesn't recognize cryptocurrency as payment and forbids ICOs. Our views are absolutely similar. That was, of course, uh, back in September. So, you know, these central bankers, they're scared. They're scared because they understand what it is. And I know I made fun of Mr. Shevstov here for saying they didn't understand what, what Bitcoin's all about, but... They're scared because they know exactly what Bitcoin's all about. They know exactly what cryptocurrencies are all about, and they're freaking out. They can't control it anymore. They can't tax it. They, they can't control who has the money. And look, you know, Putin was later quoted hanging out down in Sochi, as he always does. Chilling. Putin was quoted as saying, the usage of cryptocurrencies carries serious risks. I know the central bank's position on that. Yes, cryptocurrencies carry risk. Putin, Putin, carrying the ruble carries massive risk. Don't give me that BS. Come on, man. I was there during the ruble crash. I saw the ruble go from about 30 or 40, 35, 40 rubles to the dollar to like 120 rubles to the dollar in the space of a couple hours. Cryptocurrencies carry serious risk. Get out of town, Putin. Get out of town. Tell us the real reason for this BS, man. Oh, but it can be used by money launderers or to evade taxes or to finance terrorism. Yeah, right. Like your banks haven't been laundering money. Like American banks haven't been laundering money. American banks are some of the biggest freaking money launderers out there. It's disgusting. Evading taxes. 
you should be one to speak, Mr. Putin. Look who's evading taxes, putting their money offshore in Swiss bank accounts. Come on, man. This just stinks of typical big government, big bank BS. They don't want the little man involved. They want to keep control of the money, keep the central banks going, keep their system going. This, when I see this, I get really excited about cryptocurrencies, you know, because it means they know the apple tur the apple cart's about to get turned over. They know they're in trouble. They see this as trouble, and that's why they keep going, Arr! finance terrorism, come on, get out of here. Get out of here with this rubbish. Do you know what finances terrorism? America. America finances terrorism. You want to talk about who finances terrorism? You're banning cryptocurrency exchanges. What a ridiculous pile of horse rubbish right here. I tell you. I tell you. Putin, I thought better of you, buddy. But, you know, this is it. Big money. Governments are threatened. Russia's third largest clearinghouse warned due to ICO involvement. Now, this was just a couple days ago. They got a letter from Central Bank, Central Bank, Central Bank, Central Bank, Central Bank. That's where we're going to be hearing a lot during today's video because central banks are the problem. It's not cryptocurrencies. You guys know that. It's central banks. They are the ones who are the problem. Russia is making a serious mistake here and it's going to hurt the space in Russia. And I hope they don't institute any further anti-crypto legislations because it'd be dumb. It'd be dumb. But... Hey, greed is a powerful motivating factor, and central banks are scared of cryptocurrencies, guys. Now, they sent a letter to uh, one of Russia's biggest clearinghouses saying, basically, stop being involved with ICOs or you're going to be in trouble. And when you get a letter like that from the central bank in Russia, you stop being involved with ICOs because you're going to get in trouble. Now, to say that Russia is getting out of cryptocurrencies would be a complete misunderstanding of the situation. Putin's advisor plans $100 million for a Bitcoin mining farm. Now, in the end, I think they raised $65 million. Don't quote me on the number. I think it was $65 million. Russia's going to go big time into Bitcoin mining, but it's all going to be at the oligarch level. Regular people have not been invited to the party. Of course, I think part of it as well is that these guys don't fully understand the internet they don't fully understand that people there's there's ways to bypass these things and look official shutdowns are very problematic it shows that there isn't that government support it means people need to go underground it means that mass adoption won't happen uh, as quickly as it should happen in a country like russia russia really had the opportunity to you know go full crypto and this kind of puts them back a little bit and again this isn't to say that they're anti-blockchain technology Right. And of course, I just did a story yesterday on Bitcoin ATMs on the rise in Russia. What's going to happen to those? Are people still going to be allowed to buy Bitcoin from an ATM or are they just not going to be allowed to buy it on exchanges? I bet all these Bitcoin ATMs are going to be probably shut down in the near future as well. But I'm telling you, Mr. Putin's buddy who raised 65 million, he's either keeping that 65 million or they're setting up a giant Bitcoin mining farm. I think they're going with the latter. Now, look. Russia, they're introducing cryptocurrency financial, or they're introducing, yeah, cryptocurrency financial literacy courses. They're, they're going heavy into blockchain. The universities are offering blockchain courses. So to see the central bank come out with some kind of BS like this, to see Putin supporting it, very disappointing, very, very disappointing. And of course, one of the, the you know, the big elephant in the room here is that the Kremlin has been considering the crypto ruble. Now look, obviously blockchain and public service is massive and that's not re re and that is not related to the speculative investment side of the industry which I know a lot of us are engaged in here on YouTube. But the crypto ruble, that's very interesting because you this is not the first time we've heard about something like this. We got the crypto ruble, right? We've got the was it the Lakshmi in India. I think that was the correct name for it. And other proposals for crypto national currencies so did the central bank look and go holy cow bitcoin's a massive threat let's make our own crypto ruble ban bitcoin of course they haven't banned bitcoin completely yeah they're just banning their blo they're blocking exchanges they're shutting down the websites and look this is just step one potentially of more to come but i smell a conspiracy 
as well conspiracy guys. And of course, this brings into real questions. What will the future of something like Sibcoin be? Can they stop it? Will they try to stop it? Who knows? What about the Biocoin ICO? You know, they got official approval. Now are people going to be able to invest in this ICO? Is it going to be, is that going to be allowed? What's going to go forward with that? Are they going to have to stop accepting Bitcoin payments at Lavka Lavka? All a lot of unanswered questions. And look, this is, this is a fresh story. Not all the details have come out yet. We're going to have to wait and, of course, see a lot more to see how this story develops and what, you know, Russia is going to do moving forward. But a lot of unanswered questions in the immediate term. Obviously, things like CEX.io, are they going to be able to have a ruble pairing anymore? Are they going to have to remove that? All interesting questions. Now, of course, for a lot of, um, you know, more tech savvy Russians, they'll just use a VPN and get around it and they'll use Bitfinex or something like this and simply access it with a virtual private network because why wouldn't you? So, uh, I'm, I'm reading as in Auckland. That's funny. I'm not in Auckland. I'm in Wellington. Wellington. Okay. And of course, we even have uh, projects like Ethereum, uh, Ethereum, Mysterium, which are, you know, going to have decentralized VPNs. Even better. Even better. And of course, is such news coming out of Russia going to simply fuel more fire for the insatiable appetite of the market for privacy coins? Well, that's an interesting question. We'll have to see what kind of reaction the market takes to the Russia news. Of course, the market didn't really seem to care when Korea came out and banned local ICOs. The market may not really care about the Russia news either, although it is interesting to comment on in the space. Now, Mario Draghi over in Europe, European Central Bank has no power to regulate Bitcoin. October 8th, Central Bank discussing Bitcoin regulation. Sort it out, guys. Get, get, just take one decision and stick with it. Holy cow. Holy cow. Anyway, of course, this is uh, just in discussion at the moment. Obviously, nice common sense regulation would be a great thing. And of course, if the European Central Bank comes out and tries to push something down everyone's throat, especially something that's negative, that might bode really bad for the space because there's a lot of countries in the EU which are super pro cryptocurrencies, right? Places like Sweden, places like uh, Germany and Austria, Finland, France, some really, really pro crypto spaces. Now, of course, uh, we've just seen an article yesterday as well. France is, of course, now debating uh, what they should do with ICOs and what kind of regulations needed. And so I think this is going to be a very trending topic for about the next year or so in the crypto space, guys. So there's going to be a lot of developments here. And of course, any government which is stupid enough to decide to do things like China did and go, we're, we're fully banning it. Of course, China will be back in the very near future. But that's an overreaction. Common sense legislation is the only way to move forward. Of course, cryptocurrencies go way, way past what governments can do. Malaysia's central bank could enforce cryptocurrency ban. You're silly, Malaysia. Central Singapore's central bank plans to regulate Bitcoin payments. Regulation's okay. And of course, China, China, China. Now look, we all know what the story is here. Central banks are feeling the pressure. And I like uh, this story here by Joseph Young that's actually an optimistic sign for long-term price growth in Bitcoin because central banks realize that they've, they've had this, this scam going for all this time where they just keep printing money and issuing money at crazy low percentages. The banks get to, get to lend it out to you at stupidly high percentages, make retarded amounts of money, and all the money stays in their little circle. Bitcoin's breaking that circle apart. Cryptocurrencies are breaking that circle apart. And so I'm glad that you guys are here watching this video and that you're, you know, you're involved. And if you're not involved, get involved. But, you know, we're, we're at the forefront of this uh, revolution, which is going to overthrow the banks, guys. It's certainly going to overthrow the banks. If not overthrow the banks, overthrow the, the corrupt system behind the banks if they don't co-opt this stuff. You know, if the banks buy up all the Bitcoin... If um, countries issue their own, you know, crypto ruble and crypto rupee and crypto dollar, that's problematic. 
that's problematic. Now, after this um, news from Russia, we saw almost immediately Ukraine, who had been very, very anti-crypto, very anti-crypto, while Russia was pro-crypto, come out and say, let's completely legalize cryptocurrency transactions. It's like, if Russia's black, we have to be white. If they're red, we have to be blue. But anyway, I would like to see that go forward in Ukraine. I absolutely love Ukraine. It's an amazing country. They've had some really rough times recently. But I would like to see them actually make some positive steps in cryptocurrencies. So come on, Ukraine. Don't just make it a proposal. Put it into law. Let's do it, guys. Of course... You might think, wow, there's a lot of a lot of anti-Bitcoin legislation going on around the world. Yeah, and some big countries are doing that, but there are some real thought leaders here, some real countries which are forward-thinking places like Australia. Big shout out, Australia. Good work for making common sense laws around Bitcoin to make it a positive thing. Japan obviously has been super into it for a long time and has been a big, you know, buoy really in the market. And of course, there are so many places which are so underserved still by cryptocurrencies. And like, yeah, okay, you see Venezuela, for example, and they're, you know, anti-cryptocurrencies because, again, central bank can't control it. But you also can see a lot of potential in other places in South America, for example, and in Africa, and really all around the world to have these positive moves. But central banks are going to resist. They're going to resist. And it's not going to be pretty until we get some uh, resolution here in a few years' time. There'll be a lot of ups and downs. Countries will come out and ban it. Then they'll unban it. Have draconian legislations. Lift draconian legislations. They don't know what to do. They're just throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks. And of course, even a technically communist country like Vietnam is going to legalize Bitcoin. This is, of course, a bit of an old story. But I just wanted to point it out that, you know, you can be a conservative government and still have Bitcoin. Why the heck not? It's good for business. It's good for everybody. Bitcoin's awesome. And of course, long term, I like this uh, article here over on Zero Hedge by Tyler Durden. Of course, he points out the, the obvious facts that governments can't stop this. They're already way behind the times for trying to stop this. We've got atomic swaps. People are simply going to be able to do peer-to-peer -peer trading. We're going to have decentralized crypto exchanges. Obviously, we already have BitShares, and even though BitShares has been having a rough time recently, Binance is going to be decentralized by mid-next year. Cobenhood's coming. They can't stop it, guys. The, the, the tide of change is too big for these centralized governments to hold back. Decentralize everything, guys. Decentralize the whole bloody pile of it. Decentralize the world. We don't need these centralized governments. You know, think about think about if you live in Russia, for example, and you live in like, I don't know, Magadan, which is in the Russian Far East, or in like Murmansk, which is in the far north. You're literally like thousands and thousands of kilometers away from the capital where people are making decisions about your life, people who you will never see, who will never give a flying crap about you, and they're making decisions about your life. Centralized government's not the way. Centralized financial institutions are not the way. The world has to be decentralized. We are decentralized as a society. The institutions which we have also need to match our society. I'm getting on a bit of a rant here. I think we need to finish there. Guys, thank you so, so much for tuning in. I hope you found this video interesting. Long live the blockchain and peace out till next time.